Japan Times, 7th of May 2023, Belt and Road will enter Afghanistan due to China's high interest debt trap and Taliban success. The Belt and Road Initiative will now include Afghanistan, thanks to an agreement between the Taliban, China, and Pakistan. This could bring billions of dollars to support infrastructure development in the sanctioned nation. During their Saturday meeting in Islamabad, Pakistan's Foreign Minister Bilawal Bhutto Zardari and China's Chin Gang agreed to cooperate on Afghanistan's reconstruction efforts, including bringing the $60 billion China-Pakistan Economic Corridor to the Taliban-ruled country. After the meeting, the two sides agreed to continue their humanitarian and economic assistance for the Afghan people and enhance development cooperation in Afghanistan, including through the extension of CPEC to Afghanistan, read a joint statement released by Pakistan's foreign ministry. Officials from China and Pakistan have already explored extending the Belt and Road Initiative Centerpiece project, launched almost 10 years ago, to Afghanistan. The cash-strapped Taliban government has stated its willingness to take part in the endeavor and the opportunity to get much-needed infrastructure funding. Amir Khan Mataki, the Taliban's chief diplomat, visited Islamabad to meet with his Chinese and Pakistani counterparts and achieved a deal, according to his deputy spokesman Hafiz Zia Ahmad over the phone. The Taliban have also cherished hopes that China will increase its estimated $1 trillion worth of investments in the nation's abundant resources. The government signed its first agreement in January to extract oil from the northern Amudarya Basin with a subsidiary of China National Petroleum Corporation. The ministries of China and Pakistan also emphasize the need to unfreeze Afghanistan's foreign financial assets contributed by Americans. Because the money will be used for terrorism, the Taliban has been prevented from accessing nearly $9 billion of Afghanistan's central bank reserves kept abroad. Washington later consented to release half of it to help the economy but put it on hold after the Taliban restricted Afghan women's access to education and employment last year. Following the chaotic evacuation of American soldiers in 2021, international aid, which accounted for 60% of public spending, was halted. The militants-turned-administrators now view investments as a chance to rebuild a cash-strapped economy. A few nations, including China, Russia, and Iran, have cordial relations with the Taliban. They have given the Taliban aid worth tens of millions of dollars but have refrained from openly recognizing the administration. Since the Taliban retook power, the U.S. has contributed more than $2.1 billion, making it the single most significant donor to the humanitarian response by international organizations, according to a report. Over two-thirds of the 40 million people living in the country's extreme poverty need assistance, according to a UN agency's report released last week. This will cost $4.6 billion. According to a Gallup poll conducted in 2022, 90% of Afghans find it difficult or very difficult to make ends meet with their current income. Because the Islamic State organization, which competes with the Taliban for control, has carried out assaults in Afghanistan, Chinese business people have been reluctant to invest there. The extremist group claimed responsibility for the attack on a Kabul hotel frequented by Chinese diplomats and business people in December. Additionally, the East Turkestan Islamic Movement, a separatist organization with a foothold in Xinjiang, has made Beijing hesitant about extending its authority. Days after emphasizing the necessity to engage with the Taliban leaders since Afghanistan is experiencing the largest humanitarian crisis globally, Mutaki paid his second visit to Pakistan. 